49er football is one of the Bay Area's most cherished rituals. Nineteen ninety one saw the Niners post a winning record for the ninth consecutive season, the longest active streak in the NFL. But to achieve this winning season, the team had to battle injuries and adversity. The 49ers won the battle by drawing on the stamina and determination that are at the foundation of their great football tradition. Young takes it himself, he's got some room, he's going to try to dive for it, he gets there! Oh, what a bonanza, he must have gone three yards in the air. We can keep knocking their ass off, we're okay, aren't we? Okay, we just keep knocking their ass off. Like true thoroughbreds, the Niners have always been at their best when they are racing down the stretch. And 1991 was no exception. In winning their final six games, the 49ers flashed the furious finishing kick that has long been their trademark. We've always been a never-say-die team. Our team's always fought and fought hard, uh, uh, no matter what our record was going into December. And I think it's just, uh, the, it's just the character of the players and the character of the team itself that has that never-say-die attitude. Before the season even began, the 49ers had already suffered a shattering loss. Joe Montana's elbow injury would sideline him for the entire year. But while the absence of the game's greatest quarterback created an air of uncertainty, it could not dampen an aura of confidence. Make plays, that's what we're about, making plays. Go, start it right here, guys. Against the Giants, backup Steve Young demonstrated why he is a star in his own right. But the 49ers fell 16 to 14, and their NFL record road winning streak finally reached a dead end. The following week at Candlestick, however, the 49ers maintained a winning focus, and Young threw for three scores in a 34 to 14 triumph. After spotting the Chargers a seven to nothing lead, the San Francisco defense rebounded in a big way. The 49ers produced four turnovers and kept the visitors off the scoreboard throughout the second half. In the third period, number 30, Keith Henderson, the club's leading rusher for the season, scored a touchdown. But it was Jerry Rice who came up with the game's biggest play. And a straight back drop by... Oh, here is Jerry Rice! He's got it at the 40, 35, 30. Young pass was perfect. He's down to the 10, 5 into the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers! 1991 was another productive year for a high-flying wide receiver who was winging his way toward Canton by soaring above and flying past the opposition. Young drops back to throw, looks for Jerry. He's behind the defender. He's got it at the 25, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, he'll score easily. Touchdown, 49ers. Young drops way back to throw, says it way down. Bill Bryce is behind everybody. He'll go. 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, 49ers. 73 yards. Bryce's 80 receptions for 1,206 yards included a league-high 14 receiving touchdowns. Bryce is seemingly an elegant, effortless performer. 
But his skills are the result of hard work on the practice field, and his flawless technique is accompanied by a fearless approach to his position. Catches it, broke a dug it, broke another. He's down the sideline. He's to the 35, to the 30, to the 20, to the 15. Cuts into the middle, gets to the two, carries the defender to the end zone. Michael Stewart, touchdown 49ers. Jerry Rice is a prime example of poetry in motion, but it is poetry propelled by power and determination. Power and determination without the poetry are also qualities that describe the 49ers' hardcore contingent of tough guys. These are the unsung heroes, unselfish players, and uncommon competitors who ensure that the team packs a wallop in every phase of the game. They include coverage specialists like Antonio Goss, number 98, and defenders such as rookie cornerback Merton Hanks, number 36. There was intensity from safeties David Whitmore and Todd Bowles. Linebacker Bill Romanowski, number 53, was the club's second leading tackler, while linebacker Keith DeLong, number 59, and lineman Michael Carter and Kevin Fagan, number 75, also fueled the fire whenever the defense turned up the heat. Pierce Holt, number 78, overcame injuries to establish himself as the team's best all-around lineman. Number 94, Charles Haley's relentless outside rushing ability earned him Pro Bowl honors for the second consecutive season. Haley tied for the team lead in sacks with Larry Roberts, number 91, who enjoyed the most productive season of his six-year career. On offense, there were tough customers like tight end Brent Jones, number 84, who recovered from a knee injury to help spark a late season surge. Running back Harry Sidney, number 24, was a part-time player who displayed full tilt determination. Fullback Tom Rathman, number 44, preferred taking the collision course to the end zone. A route also favored by quarterback Steve Young. This rugged competitor added bounce to the offense and wasn't afraid to get bounced around himself. The game's best running quarterback led the team in average yards per carry and his elusiveness frustrated pass rushers while freeing up pass receivers. Despite missing six games with a knee injury, Young finished the season as the top-rated quarterback in the NFL. Through the Niners' first seven games, Young accounted for 15 touchdowns. In a Week 7 matchup against the Detroit Lions, he passed for over 250 yards and two scores. Offensively, the Niners racked up 505 net yards, nearly 300 more than the Lions, who were frustrated by San Francisco's defense all day long. Young strike to Mike Sherrard clinched a 35-3 win over a team destined for the NFC Championship game. But despite this impressive win, the Niners' record stood at 3-4 and four, with three straight road games to come. In 1991, an offensive line consisting of tackle Steve Wallace, number 74, and Harris Barton, number 79, starting Pro Bowl guard Guy McIntyre, center Jesse Sapolu, and guard Roy Foster, number 67, provided solid pass protection. This unit permitted just 24 sacks, the third lowest total in pro football. A 
I call it, Jason, then you went behind. Come a little harder because I'm looking. I saw the back of These guys had opinions on everything, from blocking they were moving, I think. They were to baking. I love you, Mom. I look, you put too much salt in the pound cake last week. I want some uh, chocolate chip cookies, will you? Don't put them raisins in it either. At Philadelphia, Steve Young was well protected against the Eagles' league-leading pass rush. He was sacked just twice in directing a 23-7 victory. It was the Niners who applied the pressure in this contest, producing six sacks. The 49ers also forced five turnovers to even their record at four and four. With this win, a defense that had struggled early began to come into its own. Total team effort was the main reason why this unit allowed the second fewest points in the NFC. Number 92, Tim Harris, was acquired in a trade and helped spark a rush that also featured number 96, Dennis Brown, and rookie Ted Washington. The ferocious pressure often paid off in takeaways. Well-timed tackles from the likes of veteran linebacker Mike Walter, number 99, produced turnovers. And an aggressive heads-up defense forced fumbles down the field. The youngsters in a developing secondary look for leadership from veteran defensive backs Don Griffin, number 29, and Dave Wehmer, number 43. Come on, killers! Let's get it going! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go, man! Waymer led the team in interceptions and forced fumbles. And this 12-year pro also topped the team in total and solo tackles. But while the defense would prove to be tough down the stretch, the entire team endured an uphill climb during a crucial 10th week encounter at Atlanta. Steve Young suffered a knee injury that would sideline him for six weeks. Still, on this hostile turf, the Niners clung to a 14-10 lead with just nine seconds remaining. But then, Atlanta's Hail Mary prayer was answered. This is Hail Mary pass. Everybody's down there. The ball is bumped around. With the touchdown! Touchdown Falcons! They took it out of the pile! This devastating defeat would have finished most teams. But the 49ers, with their never-say-die attitude, aren't like most teams. Nineteen ninety-one made it clear that the 49ers' third-string quarterback was a first-rate signal caller. After seven obscure pro seasons, Steve Bono suddenly found himself calling the shots, and he made the most of his golden opportunity. Bono's unexpected polish and poise as a passer had people singing his praises. One fan even wanted to share his rendition of a sunny 60s hit recorded by the quarterback's namesake. Come on, let go. I got you to hold me so safe. I got you, babe. Well, I'd like to say that I knew all along that he could do what he did. I, I think there's no question that we all had positive feelings about Steve and that he, he was a talented football player, but to say that we all knew that he would play as well as he did and would perform as polished as he did. I, I don't believe that we can say that. So we're pleasantly surprised. Uh, we think that was maybe the one positive that came out of the fact that we did have both Joe Montana and Steve Young injured is that we were then able to discover just how capable Steve Bono is. In a must-win Monday night matchup against the Rams, Bono passed for over 300 yards. 
A 33-10 triumph was engineered by a confident quarterback whose play faking, field vision, and mobility suggested his style was that of no ordinary Joe. The Niners scored all four of their touchdowns in the first half, displaying the form that would produce the NFC's top-ranked offense for the season. This achievement was a testament to the coaching staff and to a team that proved to be deep at the most important position in pro football. A lot of people say we got the best two quarterbacks in the NFL, and uh, we have the best three now. San Francisco also possesses two outstanding wide receivers, Jerry Rice, and John Taylor, number 82. Taylor, like Rice, is effective on short routes as well as deep patterns. Nineteen ninety one saw Taylor catch sixty four passes for over one thousand yards and nine touchdowns. Taylor is not only one of the game's most difficult receivers to cover, he is also one of the toughest to tackle. Taylor earned his teammates' vote as the Len Ashmont Award winner for courageous and inspirational play. And he also earned a place in team history when he combined with Steve Young to produce a 97-yard play from scrimmage, the 49ers' longest ever. And throw out of the end zone, Brian pursuing him from behind, sends it way downfield. Taylor made the catch, it was go back, he breaks away, he's to the 40, he's to the 30, down to the 20, he's being chased by Sanders, he'll get there, touchdown 49. While Jerry Rice and John Taylor make a terrific tandem, Taylor has emerged as a superstar in his own right. JT is sweet, baby. Nice job, JT. Way to go, man. All right. In week 14, Taylor and his teammates turned the season around when they took on the division-leading Saints in a make-it-or-break-it battle. Taylor produced the contest's first touchdown in spectacular fashion. Ono drops back to throw. Has time for the end zone. Leaping kick. Oh, John Taylor, what a touchdown reception. Up in the air, one-handed, brought it down with a defender all over him. Touchdown, 49. Dexter Carter also demonstrated a flair for the spectacular. I hanging up pretty good. Comes down to the two. Dexter Carter on the left side. Out to the 15, to the 20, to the 30. Cuts to his left, to the 40. He's to the 50. He's to the 40. Has to outrun one man. He's down to the 20, stays in bounds, he'll go all the way, touchdown 49ers, Dexter Carter, a spectacular touchdown return, 98 yards. This hotly contested game resounded with heavy contact. In this classic confrontation between two longtime rivals, New Orleans assumed a 24-17 lead with the third quarter coming to a close. But the fourth period saw the 49ers finish in style. Looks over the field. Steps across the middle. He's got Carter! Touchdown, 49ers! Oh no, drops back to throw. Downfield to Rice, he's got it! He's to the 30, he's got it down! Touchdown, 49ers! The Niners had returned to the playoff chase in full stride. At Seattle, the 49ers' resurgence was in full bloom as they refused to wilt from the pressure of having to come from behind on enemy turf. Mike Kofer's 50-yard field goal was just one sign that every member of the team was putting his best foot forward with just three games remaining to play. This contest offered further proof that in the clutch, San Francisco can count on key contributions from backups like Harry Sidney, number 24, and of course, Steve Bono. Bono to throw, rolls right, goes up across the middle, it is caught by Sidney, touchdown 49ers. 
Bono looking for the end zone, drills a pass, Jerry Wright, touchdown 49ers. With the Niners trailing, Bono and John Taylor supplied the necessary heroics to recapture the lead with less than two minutes remaining. Bono drops back to throw, steps up for the end zone, Taylor, touchdown 49ers. But to hold that lead, the defense had to come up with an even bigger play to stop Seattle from driving to a possible victory. When number 92 Tim Harris stripped the ball from David Craig, Johnny Jackson recovered the fumble to preserve a 24-22 triumph. The defense's clutch performance and Bono's confident play earned a second straight come-from-behind win. The following week, the Niners returned to Candlestick, where they were on course to equal the best home record in franchise history. The second largest home crowd of the season was on hand to cheer a team that is awfully tough during December. Since 1981, the Niners are an NFL best 35 and 6 in the year's final month. Another sign that they are great closers. On this Saturday, there would be yet another December victory as the Niners burst the bubble of the playoff-bound Kansas City Chiefs. The defense recorded three sacks, two of them by Tim Harris. Dave Wehmer intercepted one pass and forced a fumble as the Niners pounded out a 28-14 win that gave them a 9-6 record and a good shot at a playoff berth. Bono was once again sharp before a knee injury forced him to the sidelines. Bono drops back to throw, goes to the goal line, touchdown 49ers, John Taylor. Bono goes to throw, hell alone end zone, touchdown 49ers, Jerry Wright. Dexter Carter turned in a season best 53-yard run. Sweeps to the right, lots of room. Oh, he's to the 45, 40, down the sideline, he's gone, 10-5, touchdown 49ers. power and pride of 49ers football were again prominently displayed against the Chicago Bears on the final Monday night of the season. Young rolling to the left, pressure, throws it, caught touchdown 49ers, Jamie Williams. Second and goal at the three, Jerry Rice in motion to the left. Young throws to Rice at the goal line, he reaches in, touchdown 49ers. Steve Young threw three touchdown passes, two of them to Jerry Rice. Steve Young drops back to throw, launches it way down the left sideline. Rice is out there, defender falls down, down the sidelines, 10-5. Although the Niners had already been eliminated from postseason play for the first time since 1982, they didn't pack it in, they turned it on. Number 45, Kevin Lewis produced an interception and snuffed out another drive by forcing a fumble. Don Griffin, number 29, recovered two fumbles, and one of them resulted in a team record return. Rouse in motion, and off to Green, fumble! Ball is picked out of the air! On the right sideline, here's Griffin! Griffin makes 100 yards! He's the midfield! He's got a whole cadre of blockers! He's to the 20, 15, 10, 5! A 52-14 victory and a never-say-die attitude enabled the 1991 San Francisco 49ers to finish in style and to fashion a stylish future. No one sat easy with that frustration of not making the playoffs when you're playoff caliber. But then when you really got a grip on the reality of our finish, you realize that we finished on a high note, and there's a strong foundation there upon which to build. We've been a very uh, confident organization uh, since I've owned the team, and for the last 10 years, we've been a, a very good, strong football team. Uh, and I think something like this, a season like we had last year, will only enhance uh, the organization that we have and the type of players that we have so that we can strive on to, to bigger and better things this year.